funny you're traversed into movies because outside of Seinfeld's um, particular viewpoint on television comedy and how the networks don't want to do anything risque or do anything of note, apparently, which how you look at some of the shows that they have been on and uh, I'd say that, I don't know. Norman Lear, if he was dead, he'd be rolling in his grave hearing this. But he did go on to talk about movies as well. With his Netflix movie Unfrosted set to stream in May, Seinfeld has been making the press rounds for a few weeks and giving his blunt thoughts on the state of Hollywood. He proclaimed, the movie business is over. In a recent interview with GQ magazine, he quote, film doesn't occupy the pinnacle in the social, cultural hierarchy that it did for most of our lives. We've, we've all agreed with that one. When a movie came out, if it was good, we all went to see it. We all discussed it. We quoted lines and scenes we liked. Now we're walking through a fire hose of water trying to see it. <laughs> what? what? Have, we, have we placed film? Depression? Malaise? I would say confusion. This orientation replaced the movie business, Seinfeld answered. Everyone I know in show business every day is going, what's going on? How do you do this? What are we supposed to do now? That I find damn near infuriating. All right. Look, admittedly, there have been some trip ups. There have been some trip ups in movie making. Yes. We certainly saw that in the past couple of years with big budget movies flopping, uh, very few mid level to low level movies being pushed in theaters, which could easily have been great comedies, but they were not. And ultimately, it was, it wasn't for Barbenheimer. Probably people wouldn't even bother thinking about going to a theater unless it was something worthwhile. All right, I, you, me, we all live around movies. All right, movies and television that is our bread and butter. We watch it, we review it, we we, we uh, critique it. We want to be in it. It is a part of all of our structural lives because Lord knows we see enough projects that are going on. We see the hustle that a lot of people are trying to do to get things going, especially after the pandemic and after the strikes, when the industry itself was slow to a crawl. So if you want to go ahead and critique on that, that's completely understandable. We are in a little bit of a stopgap area where the industry itself does have some problems that it is still ironing out from years ago. But to go ahead and look at the successes that we have had in theaters, even just this year, and to say that the industry itself is faulty, just because your damn 70-year-old ass can't get your movie into theaters, and instead you got to go to Netflix, keep that energy over there. All right? As far as I'm concerned, Seinfeld has been on this trip where he has just been so disgruntled about anything of a younger generation or any uh, critique of what his comedy was as opposed to what it is now. And that's why he stopped doing stand-up at colleges because he doesn't want to deal with the audiences. It's like, first of all, I'd love to see the college kids that are paying to see Jerry Seinfeld, all right? I, I'd rather see them see Jerry Lewis and his body is probably buried six feet under somewhere in France, all right? <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. Well, Seinfeld is a guy who I'm, look, I'm, I'm going full rant here. Seinfeld is a guy who I believe got high on his own supply, all right? He had his show, and it did well on NBC, and Lord knows it made a career for a lot of people. But you know what? He has been riding this goddamn Seinfeld way for way too long, all right? Just because he has all the money from the residuals, he feels like he doesn't need to do anything more. He doesn't need to improve. He doesn't need to upgrade. We learned that for the proper artists, there are people that go ahead and change with the times and learn how to refine what was good and make it better. Look at someone like Madonna. She is constantly reinventing herself. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But you know what? She is always taking what is her and actually developing it so this way more people can see it than ever before. Seinfeld is one of these people that is so stuck in his own ass, sniffing it and loving the smell of it, that he feels he can do no wrong. Whereas really... I don't care how many people watch his damn reruns. That's all he has left. He is essentially a, the biggest one-hit wonder I have ever seen in my life as far as television and comedy is concerned. 
And thank God Larry David at least went ahead and made his show that this way we could actually get a comparable version of what Seinfeld could have been as opposed to what Seinfeld was. So that this way we could see that there were options, there were better options. Even the ending of the series itself this month showed, oh, we should have ended Seinfeld like this. Absolutely. Even had to get the cameo. Don't tell me comedy is dead just because your comedy is one of the dead ones. Wow. 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 It's been a day. All right. Damn. (laughs) His hair moved on that one. Yes. (laughs) It's been a day. (laughs) So here's the thing. I mean, Ryan, I do see your point 100%. And calling him the biggest comedic one hit wonder, I think is a good argument, you know, because nobody remembers his time on, on the show Benson you know, or B movie for the most part. And while some of the other cast, like for example, Julie Lee Dreyfus, Patrick Warburton, they have continued on and done very well for themselves. Just the point that name me one set of Seinfelds that you remember. Not something, show, something he actually did during his standup. And I'm not talking about his cadence. So it's like, what's the deal with airplane food? Not that nonsense. Actual set delivery lines. Can you remember it? The, co- the closest thing I can think of is he had a stand-up special called I'll, I'll Tell You Again for the Last Time. That's about all I can really give you, to be honest. Yeah, because his comedy is just that. It's just shtick. It's not even so much what he's saying. It's just how he's saying it. It's essentially Larry the Cable Guy with Get Her Down. His substance is crap. You look at what Seinfeld said, and originally going into this, I was kind of like, I do agree with it, because comedy is very careful now, where you just can't say certain words on TV, you get canceled and your career is toast. But at the same time, you have shows like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is like Seinfeld on acid. (laughs) You know, there are episodes you find on Hulu that you have to find on like foreign websites to watch, because Hulu and Disney is like, this is not acceptable, we can't even play this. Like I said, in this case here, I think a lot of people are coming after Jerry, because you know, there are so many options. And I've been reading the comments on Twitter on this, you know, and I think comedy has, comedy evolves, I think, naturally over time. A hundred years ago, you know, a squirting flower and a, and a banana peel was prime A-list vaudevillian comedy. Now it's dumb as crap. Mm-hmm. So comedy just naturally just evolves in its own way. Now, I'm a little bit stone, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit old on this one because I do prefer word comedy over like visual comedy. You know, so things like, like I said, what I talked about with like Girls 5 Eva, what the little nuanced things that they would throw in there were genius to me. You know, again, this is why I like Tina Fey and Robert Carlock so much. Between 30 Rock and, uh, you know, Kimmy Schmidt and now this, you know, I, it's the kind of stuff that's right in my wheelhouse. So absolutely my wheelhouse. But then there's other things out there where you got to have that pop culture side of it. It's like, I don't care. Oh, good. They made a Matrix reference. Okay, great. Whatever. Don't care. You know, show me something that I can think about. And right. I think that's part of the problem, which which dates me, because I think the TikTok generation, sorry, Rob, doesn't want to put that time of effort and reflection in on comedy. <laughs> but I, I, will, I will speak for Rob, where it's like, because of things like TikTok and Vine and YouTube, there has been an exploration into comedy. Like, how fast can you get the joke off? And they have proven that you don't need a lot of this whole large setup or intricate, uh, you know, um, necessary or unnecessary timing of things in order to make a joke work. You can get a joke done in seven seconds if it's good enough. So just the simple fact that we can now laugh faster and we can laugh easier does not necessarily mean that comedy is dead. It just means there is now a momentum that some people have to keep up with. It, it, It evolves. You are relegated to older types of comedy that are easier to follow. A lot, I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with you. Yeah, thank you. And the problem is there are just some people that like what they like and to hell with anything else rather than having an open mind. Which is a problem in its own right. Right. Some of this younger generation that's like uh, Rob's generation, they're not going to know who uh, Jerry Seinfeld oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I know who Jerry Seinfeld is. You want to know how pissed off I am about this whole Jerry Seinfeld thing? I'll just say this. We know how pissed off you are about this Jerry Seinfeld thing. You just expressed it. You know, to the degree. I would rather watch a Pete Davidson stand-up special <gasps> than anything of Jerry's. <gasps> oh! Oh, that's a... Where's the, where's the explosion? Where's the explosion, buddy? <laughs> Wow! Wow! 
that, that's how serious. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, he does not like. Now that I've made that pivotal point, we can move on. All right. 